You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 12th of July and I'm Roland from Milford. The RBA released their monetary decision and decided to maintain the current cash rate and also the target three-year bond rate at 0.1%. What did change was the size of quantitative easing, which will be scaled back from approximately $5 billion a week to $4 billion a week in early September. They also only guaranteed purchasing until mid-November, which is shorter than what people expected. However, they can, of course, extend this. Now, there's a lot to unpack in low speech, but ultimately, they want to see sustained wage inflation, which in their mind requires an unemployment rate around the low 4% mark. We are currently at about 5.1%, so we continue to watch developments in the labour market very closely. OPEC failed to reach a deal, despite extended talks as tensions between the UAE and Saudi Arabia increase. The potential outcomes of this stalemate are broad, from no change to the status quo to UAE potentially leaving OPEC, which they have threatened to do in the past. Without a deal, you get a lot of fear and speculation that one party will over or underproduce, and as we know, the market hates uncertainty. We'd still expect a deal to eventually occur, as these attentions have historically been well addressed. However, it's fair to say they aren't too pleased with each other, given they couldn't even decide on the next meeting date. ISM services data in the US was released, and at first glance, it suggested a slowing in the US economic recovery. The index fell to 60% from a record high 64% in May. However, it's important to remember that as long as this index remains above 50, the components are still expanding. It's just at a slower rate than the month prior. One quote from the survey, which is worth highlighting, was made by a retail company that said they continue to see cost increases, delayed shipments, pushed out lead times, and no clarity as to when predictive balance returns to that market. So even if growth is slowing, it is still growing at a strong rate with tight employment and inventory levels. The key equity news domestically was the bid for Sydney Airport from a consortium of investors at $8.25 a share, which was a very healthy 42% premium to its previous close. This priced Sydney at 23 times FY19 EBITDA, which is a premium to its historic trading range of 18 to 20 times. Now, there are a range of complicating factors. However, the consortium is one of highly sophisticated investors, so they obviously would have thought through strategies to overcome these hurdles. Also, don't sleep on Macquarie, who are apparently putting together their own consortium for a competing bid. Tabcorp also released the result of their strategic review, which turned down the acquisition proposal for their wagering and media business. They now plan on spinning off the lottery and keno business into a separately listed entity. Now, the market is clearly not happy with this, as the shares have continued to trade lower since the announcement. It seems unlikely a deal will now be done just for the wagering and media business. However, there's a small chance a party could bid for the whole business. And there's a bunch of interesting data to look out for in the coming week. Domestically, the lockdown continues to worsen in Sydney. However, we do have a playbook for this. The key thing to monitor is obviously cases, but also the hospitalisation rate. Positively, vaccinations should begin to accelerate as we get our hands on more Pfizer vaccines. You also have the Australian unemployment rate data to be released, with the market expecting no change to the 5.1% achieved in May. In the US, the market will be very interested in the CPI and PPI data, which should give us a sense on how inflation is tracking. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.